Hey guys, welcome back. You are watching me on ZTech Media. Why not on Top 10? Just because we just changed the name of our channel from Top 10 to ZTech. And all the future videos are going to be published on this channel. So it's basically the same channel with a different name. All right, so in this today's video, we are going to talk about load balancing and more specifically the system design of load balancing. So I'll get you the information which you require if you are trying to know about load balancing. So keep watching guys. Great. All right, so as I told you today, we are going to talk about load balancing. So we'll talk what is load balancing, why it is used, what are the different algorithms used when you deploy load balancing and how the physical architecture look when you deploy load balancing. So to begin with, I would like to let you know load balancing in basic terms is an efficient way of handling the incoming network traffic. So for example, let's say today I create a website called ztechmedia.com and obviously I will not have a lot of clients or users accessing that website because of a very simple reason that my website is not familiar. But let's say down the line year or two, uh, my website becomes familiar and I have like a million or two million users accessing that website on a daily basis then yes, the current physical data structure or the data infrastructure will not be supporting that particular huge traffic which is accessed by my website. So what I need to do there, I need to increase my physical data structure. For example, I need to have so many servers instead of one. So when I have so many servers and so many users in between these two, I need to deploy load balancers. So I think you are getting what I'm trying to say. Load balancers, the actual work of it is to distribute the traffic, incoming network traffic, which is uh, the accessing of my website by millions of users to the server because that's where the website is getting hosted. So what load balancer does is it actually takes the request from the clients and process it according to the convenience so that the web website doesn't crash. So we'll talk more about this, we'll talk more specifically on different types of algorithms used or how the terminology works when you deploy a load balancer. So keep watching guys. Alright, so as we were discussing about uh, ZTech Media, so let's assume today I create a website which is called ZTech Media and we publish that to the masses, like group of people around the globe. And obviously since we are starting it today, it will not be that famous or familiar like we are expecting it to be. So down the line, one year, two year, we might expect a higher traffic coming to our website. So let's say we become uh, famous all of a sudden like boom in just one night and we have like two million users accessing or subscribers to our website. So what happens is here we have a huge traffic. Uh, maybe conquering traffic of hundreds and thousands of people, if not millions, accessing our website on a oh, daily basis. You, like, and then we have, have the data center or the data architecture or the physical infrastructure of our company with just one server because we were not expecting such huge traffic or volume of traffic coming to our website. So what we need to do, the moment we see the higher volumes coming to our website is we have to upgrade the physical data structure. Like we have to implement more servers in our data center so it can be more than one so it can be 10 15 depending upon the strength of the traffic so when we have large number of users accessing our website more requests coming for our websites then we have more servers to handle those requests but then we need to find a way unified way an organized way by which we can address those requests by clients to our websites so how will we do that? That's where the load balancer comes into place. So in simple words, what is a load balancer? Load balancer is a traffic cop, as you see on the roads. Earlier, we, we, we never had so many traffic lights on the signals or the intersections. We used to have the traffic police standing there and guiding people one after another so that you know people avoid accidents and traffic jams and etc. and etc. So that's the same role the load balancer plays when it comes to load balancing. All right, so since we have discussed a large number of users accessing my website, which is ztechmedia.com, so what is the task for website now? Because we have more requests coming in from the clients. So what it means is the websites has to accept the request and host the response. Right, so when so a, a website receives request, it has two functionalities to fulfill. One, accepting the request in a proper manner as it was sent 
and then responding correctly. So when it is responding to the request of the clients, it has to take care of two things. These are the two important things which a website needs to address. One is it has to be fast in response. Second is it has to be reliable in its response. So how will that fast access in response to the clients or the reliability comes? That's where the load balancer takes place. So the role of road balancer is it's actually a mediator. So the physical infrastructure will actually look like this. Clients trying to access the website through internet. So the internet is the second layer and then it's the load balancer. So when we talk about load balancer, there are two things which we need to keep in mind. One is the physical or the hardware load balancer and then the software load balancer. And then they will be forwarding the request uh, as in required or as depending upon how huge the request is to the different types of servers to, uh, so that the servers can respond back to the client. So this is how it, it works in load balancing methodology and we are going to talk about different terminologies of load balancing right now. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the algorithms of load balancing. So when we talk about algorithms of load balancing, there are so many. But it depends on the choice or the needs you have for load balancing. So if I have to name a couple of algorithms, then it will be a wrong drawback, least connection, least time, hash, IP hashing, etc. etc. So we'll talk more about these names which I have mentioned in a specific manner going forward. Alright, so what happens in round robin algorithm? So whenever the website receives request, what it does is the load balancer, it routes the request in a very sequential manner, one after another to the number of servers it has. Then after round robin we have least connections, as the name says, least connections. So whenever a website receives request, the load balancer in this particular algorithm sends the request to those servers with least number of connections to the clients. That means who are handling least number of requests from the clients. Then next we have the least time algorithm. So what happens in this least time algorithm is the load balancer, if it is set, set to least uh, time algorithm, it will accept the request and send it by a formula which is already pre-selected within that algorithm, focusing on two factors, the fastest response time and least uh, connections to the server. So any server which is serving least number of requests and can respond faster according to its own capabilities then yes, the request is sent to that particular server by the load balancer. And then we have hash algorithm and then also IP hash algorithm. There is not much of a difference between these two algorithms, but I will tell you the difference which I uh, was able to figure out in a more common way. Uh, so in hash uh, uh, algorithm, what happens is the request is sent to the client with the keyword. For example, if I set the keyword as IP address, so yes, the requests are sent specifically within that range. And in IP hashing, what happens is, whenever the load balancer request, re receives requests from the client, what it does is, when it is responding back through the website to the client, it specifically focuses on particular IP address which the receiver wants to receive the request. So what? After listing all this, we might be guessing what are the actual benefits of using a load balancer in the system design process of any technology or any uh, website or an application. So the benefits of load balancer are so many, but I'm just going to name the few important ones. It is scalable, it is flexible, it is efficient, and you can have a global server load balancer for a website which is uh, common to all the other locations of servers and it can process the uh, requests which are coming from the clients in a very efficient manner and you just need one load balancer. So these are the main benefits of using a load balancer and if you want to know more detailed information on load balancing I am also uh, attaching a video in this particular video. Alright guys, so if you like the content and if you are looking for more content from us I would request you to like, share and subscribe. Our channel name has changed from Top 10 to ZTech Media and if you want more information on load balancing, there is a short clip which is coming up which will give you a little bit more information than what we have discussed just now.
All right, now we have round robin algorithm. So what happens in this algorithm? As you can see on the screen, we have one load balancer and two servers, server one and server two. And now we have received the first request. So the load balancer is assigning that request to the server one. Second request will go to server two. And the process goes on three to one and four to two. Five to one and six to two and this is a very good terminology or algorithm if both the servers are of equal size and capacity now let's say we have two servers server one which is capable of highly handling higher load and then server two capable enough of not handling higher load so what happens here if we are using the round robin algorithm first server go to server 1, second goes to server 2, 3 goes to server 1, 4 goes to server 2, 5 goes to server 1, 6 goes to server 2. However, with this kind of algorithm, the server 2 will crash because of higher load and it is not known for handling higher load. So what we have to do in this case, that's why we have another algorithm known as weighted round robin algorithm now what happens here is we have two servers one with higher capacity two with lower capacity and what we do here is we assign a weight terminology to the load balancing what we do is we assign weight 5 to server 1 and weight 1 to server 2. So what happens is as soon as the load balancers start receiving requests from clients, the first 5 requests will go to server 1 because of its higher capacity and the 6th one will go to server 2. And then the process goes on, it keeps repeating. So the next 5 will go to server 1 and then to server 2 so this is how it happens as you can see on the screen I would like to request you guys to like share and subscribe to our channel ZTech media if you have any suggestions please leave comments Thank you. Then we have least connections algorithm. So what happens in least connection algorithm? Let's find out on the screen. We have two servers of equal loads. Then we are st we start getting requests and whichever server is handling less load, the request will be assigned to that particular server. So in this case, we have four green requests which are not yet attended. So it will be assigned to the server which has less connections.